My name is Samson um, from Nigeria. That's in West Africa. Um, my original name is Sahid. I'm from a Muslim family, an Islamic background. Um, grew up with memories of going to the Arabic school and sitting at the feet of the Imam with many other kids. And we would study the Quran for literally hours before we go back home. And I remember that when you make mistakes, the Imam literally just flogs you from a distance because he has this long whip uh, that he uses. And uh, my parents were very proud Muslims. My mom is from uh, a lineage of very ardent, Mus of ardent Muslims. Um, he, her father, her father was the chief imam of my town. Chief imam is more like the greatest Islamic figure in the old town, and he was that for many years. So stepping out of that, of that kind of history was, mm, I wasn't prepared for it to just um, make it simple. Um, and I had other influences growing up, many other memories, um, none, of, none which was Christian. Some were very ignorant memories. Um, myself and my other brother was more like a father figure for me uh, because I'm the second in the family. I have four younger siblings. So my other brother and I had many memories together. We would do many things together. Some of them that I consider very sinful today, not things that I'm proud of. Some of them very um, normal things that kids would do very fun things that I, I, I still cherish today. Uh, but uh, when I got into high school, I also had many other influences, but none of this was still Christian yet. This was just still random uh, influences that were sinful and some just um, ignorant, uh, not sinful, but no, no Christian influences yet. Uh, so uh, when I got into IR institution, uh, when I went to the university, I ended up in a Seventh-day Adventist college. This is funny because you may wonder how did a Muslim end up in a Seventh-day seventh Adventist college? Well, um, my father is somebody who wants to give quality education to his children. Uh, even though he's proud of being a Muslim, uh, he has very deep interest in Western education as well. So he believes that you have to go to school, good schools and everything. And because he could afford it at this point, he said my elder brother should go to a, a private institution, which ended up being a Seventh-day Adventist institution in my country. And when it was time for me, it was like, oh, I can't afford to send you there because your brother is already there. This is going to be too much money. Uh, and that's true because it was going to put a strain on the family's finances, knowing that I had four other, four younger siblings after me. So uh, I wrote an entrance examination into a public university because that was the only option I had because of financial constraints. But then my result was not found. They said they couldn't find it. And my dad was like, oh, you can't stay home one year. You have to go join your brother. And so I ended up at Babcock University, that's the name of the institution, a Seventh-day Adventist institution. So uh, remember I said up to this point, the influences in my life, none of them was Christian. All I knew about Christianity was just hearing people drumming and people screaming and shouting and dancing in churches around my home uh, as I was growing up. That was all I knew. I knew Christians like to dance, Christians like to sing and make noise in the church. That was all I knew about Christianity. I didn't have a direct Christian influence. But when I got to this institution, uh, things were not about to change because I still made friends that were very, very worldly, worldlings, right? Um, we did things like rap songs and would, I would write my own rap songs and they would write their own rap songs. We would do like rap battles in the dorm. And uh, we would watch very stupid things and all of that. But I began to have two friends God sent two friends into my life in this same institution. One of them was uh, from a Pentecostal background, a Christian, but not Adventist. And the other was a Seventh-day Adventist. So the, the one, the Pentecostal one was Ayobami and the 
Seventh Day Adventist friend was Debo. So uh, Debo and Ayobami became very close to me, apart from the other friends I had. And uh, their life wasn't perfect. I would say that they had their own issues. Like they would do things that I would do also at that point. Some of them also watched movies and things like that. But uh, one thing I saw that was still different about them was that they had convictions. They talked about the Bible. They spoke to me about Christ. They spoke to me about scriptures. They even challenged me to study the Bible and things that I never dreamed I would ever do. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I began to listen to them more uh, because I knew that I had this inward desire to be free from the things that I was used to up to this point because none of these things really gave me the peace I really needed. I had many uh, experiences of like having things like demons in my sleep and things like that. And um, I also didn't have a life that I was very proud of because I knew that the things I did, I couldn't speak about them in the public, that kind of thing. So I wanted freedom from them, but I knew none of the things I knew up to this point was gonna help me find the freedom. These new ideas of Jesus and uh, the scriptures and the thing that Jesus came to offer me the freedom from sin and all of these crazy ideas. I call them crazy because uh, it was like somebody making like very uh, incredulous claims to set you free from something that you thought you cannot be free from. And I thought I would give it a try because I wanted to break those addictions and some of the things I was getting involved with with my friends in the dorm that didn't give me real peace, right? So I began to study the Bible and for the first time in that institution, I began to study the Bible. And I read through the Paul's epistles as my Pentecostal friend challenged me to do because he was so New Testament-like. And uh, why Debo, my Adventist friend, challenged me to also study the Old Testament. And there was this clash between their beliefs that also gave me lots of headache. And uh, what, like I said earlier on, they also had some things in their lives that I think that Jesus should, should, Jesus should help them about, like Jesus should be able to set you free from this and that. So I began to look at them to see what, I, what they spoke about was going to actually happen in their life. Like I knew Debo was very addicted to movies. That's my Adventist friend. I also knew that Ayobami was involved in certain things that I would rather not mention. So I'm like, I hear you guys. I have began to study the Bible, but let's see how this really uh, takes effect in your life. So... Um, my Adventist friend, I didn't tell them that though. That was what I had at the back of my mind. So my Adventist friend, uh, Debo, before we graduated, was uh, totally left movies. In the third year, I began to see him change a lot. I began to see him like just watching sermons and just talking about Christ every time. And all of the movie things, he never spoke about them anymore. And I'm wondering, is this for real? Because I knew that he was very addicted in the first two years of college. And he spoke to me about how Jesus gave him the freedom. And I'm like, if this really works for him, this should work for me too. You know, that was what I thought. Because that was my argument in my mind that if this works for you, it should work for me. And so uh, for Ayobami, I like the fact that he believed that God could set him free, even if not now, but at some point. But I didn't have that kind of confidence in Islam. Because, yeah, Islam didn't tell me he could do that. Islam said I would rather just continue sinning, you know. <laughs> and I don't know what will happen when I die, you know. So there were things that didn't really make sense. I felt that I needed freedom, but Islam didn't offer me the freedom, so to say. So I wanted to try Christ to make it short. And uh, I didn't do that while I was there. I got baptized at the college through their influences, right? Uh, so God really brought these influences in my life. But what really played a role were my two friends that showed me Christ in what they said, how they lived their lives, and the example that they gave me. So when I left the college, I was still not changed yet. I had elements of Christianity now, but nothing like a radical change yet. So I was still doing the things I was doing. But this is my point. My point. Uh, after I left the college, I began to change. Uh, away from them, right? But the influences that they had on me followed me. And uh, 
now that I'm an Adventist and I'm here at, at uh, Heartland College trained to be a missionary, I look back and I ask myself questions about the role they played in my life. I wonder if they said, okay, I, if Debo, for example, or Ayobami said, okay, I'm not perfect, so I would, rather, I would rather not share my faith with anyone because I myself am having struggles. I wonder if I will be here today. Uh, I also wonder if uh, they said, mm, we've tried showing, showing him Christ, but he still does his rap thing. He still watches this, he still watches that, he still does this, and he still does that. Because for like four years of college, nothing really changed in my life, you know. <laughs> and if they just give up and said, okay, this Christianity thing doesn't really work. I mean, we've tried to witness to this person, but it's still almost the same for four years. And they said, okay, let's, let's just stop um, trying. I wonder if I will be here today. So I, I, I just believe that the little things that we do in showing an example may go a long way after. Maybe not right then, but after. Because, uh, like I said, I am somebody who usually have vivid memories. We all do to a greater extent. And there, there has been so many negative influences in our lives growing up, you know, like... Um, you, you can tell uh, as a child you had many things that happened as you were growing up. And these memories stay to a greater extent in your mind, right? And if there is no positive example or positive influences to counteract those negative experiences, there is no hope. That's my whole point. There is no hope at all. So what I think they did for me, what my friends did for me was that they brought a new influence in my life. They brought a new story, a new example, a new a different thing into my life that could counteract every other thing that I've had all my life up to that point. So the example, even though it didn't happen immediately, became a memory for me. I remembered their, their love for the Bible. I remember their love for Jesus. I remembered how they always spoke about Jesus and what he could do for them. I remember how, they, how my Adventist friends spoke about country living, even though I wonder what, what that was like, what is country living? But he spoke, he spoke about it nevertheless to me, right? And I, I remember many, many things I can't really start like listing right now. But the, my whole point is that my whole point is that when I left the college, I had something that was different from what I brought into the college, and I could decide afterwards what path I wanted to choose. So they gave me options, so to say. So I think my <clears throat> appeal to the youth is that when you go into college, as you're going now, right, don't underestimate the power of a positive example. It may not be right then, but don't underestimate it because afterwards, even while you're gone, long gone, that positive example can be the only reference for someone who never had such example up to that point. That may be the only uh, I don't know, the only, the only lifeline for someone after you guys leave. They may just be struggling with something after college and thinking, how can I find freedom? And maybe the only thing they will remember is you. This friend in college, you showed me Christ, who talked about some you know, savior and things like that. That may be the only thing they will remember in a very desperate moment of their life. So don't get overwhelmed by the fact that people don't change immediately or by your own struggles. Just show Christ and believe that your positive example at some point would be, maybe, it may not definitely be, but maybe the only lifeline for someone like it was for me today.